Hey friends, I hope the morning's treating you well. I want to tell you a story this morning about David Bowie, Frank Zappa, and Adrian Ballou. Adrian Ballou is a great, great guitar player who is way outside and just a true innovator. And he shared this on his Facebook page eight years ago, and I want to share it with you. Adrian Ballou was on tour with Frank Zappa in Europe in 1978. And he was Zappa's stunt guitar player. Um, if you had never seen him, I can only imagine what the audience has thought hearing Adrian Ballou for the first time right around then, if it was the first time they'd heard him. But they played in Cologne, Germany, and Brian Eno showed up and was just blown away by Adrian Ballou. You know, couldn't believe how great he was. Now, he knew that, that David Bowie was looking for a guitar player right around then so he immediately calls David Bowie he's like you have to hear this guy that's playing with Frank Zappa I should also say I'm going to post the link down below to all of this so you guys can read the entire post yourself so the very next night they play in Berlin there's a part of the show where Frank Zappa takes a long guitar solo by himself so the whole band leaves the stage Adrian Blue walks off the stage and he sees over behind the uh, mixing console on the side of the stage that there's David Bowie and Iggy Pop. So he walks up to Bowie and introduces himself. Adrian Ballou says, so I walked over to David Bowie, shook his hands and said, I love what you've done. Thank you for all the music. And he said, great. How would you like to be in my band? Uh, I motioned back towards Frank and said, well, I'm kind of playing with that guy now. And David laughed and said, yes, I know. But when Frank's tour ends, my tour starts two weeks later. Shall we talk about it over dinner? So David said he would meet me back at our hotel. And sure enough, when I arrived back at the hotel, David Bowie and his assistant Coco were sitting on a couch in the lobby. As I walked past them, they whispered to me, get into the elevator, go up to your room, come back down in a few minutes and meet us outside. We have a car waiting. And it was like something from a spy film. When I came back down and went outside, there was a black limousine waiting. The driver opened up the door and I got in the back with David and Coco. David immediately launched into all of his plans for his upcoming tour, the songs we would play, the staging and so on, and how much he loved my guitar playing. It was exciting. He said they were ta taking me to one of his favorite restaurants in Berlin. But Adrian Ballou says, we arrived at the restaurant, went in the front door, and who should be sitting at the very first table but Frank Zappa and the rest of the band. So the three of us sat down with Frank and the band. David, trying to be cordial, motioned to me and said, quite a guitar player you have there, Frank. And Frank said, F you, Captain Tom. Note, Frank had demoted David from Major Tom to Captain Tom. David persisted. Oh, come on now, Frank. Surely we can be gentlemen about this. Frank said, F you, Captain Tom. By this point, I was paralyzed. David said, so you really have nothing to say? Frank said once again, F you, Captain Tom. <laughs> David and Coco and I got up and went back out the front door. Getting in the limo, David said in his wonderfully British way, I thought that went rather nicely. <laughs> so again, that's the first part of this. He did a follow-up the next day where he explained more, and I'm gonna go into that. A quick sidebar while I go get coffee. This movie theater behind me, Can Can Cinema, it's an art theater. It was built and is owned by a guy who used to be a roadie for David Bowie back in the 70s, and he's got great stories. I interviewed him and we shared some of those here on the channel and I'll link it at the end of this so you guys can watch it. I'm curious if you guys have ever seen Adrian Ballou live. I had a chance back in the 90s. I used to work at a bar and I was able to get into its sister bar for free. So I saw a lot of shows and I would go see things that I really maybe wouldn't have paid money for just to take a chance on it. And I did that with Adrian Ballou. I liked him, but uh, he was it was an acoustic tour. It was just him solo acoustic. And I came in not really knowing what to expect. And he played a couple songs that were good. And then he stopped 
and he took questions from the audience. It's very cold and windy out here, as you can probably tell. <laughs> he stopped and took questions from the audience and just talked to the people in the audience. It broke down all of these rock star barriers, and it was great. He'd play two or three more songs, maybe a request, and then he would go ahead and take more questions from the audience. It was a seated show, probably four or five, 500 people there. It was really, really great, and it opened my mind to, you know, what when you go into a show with preconceived notions, how sometimes you're wrong about that. And um, I think for a three or four year period, and like I said, I was seeing a lot of shows at that time, 50 to 100 a year. And that was my favorite show that I saw for a two or three year period. But I got my coffee. I'm going to try to warm up and finish this story for you guys. So once again, I'm going to share all of this in the comments down below. I'll put the link so you can read all of this yourself. It's really good. And the comment sections are really interesting also. But uh, Adrian says the next day, he posted this the next day. It was February in Europe, which meant it was icy cold outside, but for me, it was even more icy inside. When you're touring, especially in a professional band of hired musicians, you tend to partner up with somebody. One person you hang out with the most. Frank was the person I hung out with. I often sat next to him as we traveled on planes and buses. I joined him at breakfast. I had stayed at Frank's house many weekends during our three-month rehearsal schedule and I felt we had some sort of friendship beyond just employee, employer. Of course, he was entitled now to be distant to me. He had plucked me out of obscurity, taught me so many things, and shined a bright light on me. Frank was my mentor, and he was not an asshole to me. Not ever. He was generous, funny as heck, brilliant, and informative. A genius. I had the time of my life around him. It was never a part of my plan to leave Frank's tutelage forever. Uh, he said, we still, had, we still had two weeks of touring left. Frank had already informed me of his intentions after the tour ended. He said he was going to rent a giant film editing machine and spend three or four months editing our live concert footage into a film called Baby Snakes. He explained I would be kept on a retainer, which meant I would be paid to do nothing but wait for Frank next pro Frank's next project. I received a call from my manager. Now it was official. I was being offered a four month tour with David Bowie. In reality, it turned into more than a year. People usually get paid on tours just for the amount of time they're out. And when that tour's over, their pay ends. So they're just kind of hired contractors, really. And, uh, that's what was going on right here with Adrian Ballou, but Frank was offering him something more that usually only gets offered by very large artists like a Bob Dylan or a Keith Urban, you know, or Taylor Swift or something like that. They will have people that they pay a yearly salary and they are on call all the time. So Frank was going to move into a situation like that, but uh, it had yet to happen. And uh, Adrian Ballou was free to work for anybody he wanted to, but that didn't mean it wasn't gonna get awkward. Adrian Ballou goes on to say, later that day we were on a bus to an airport. I decided to break the ice. I walked to the very last row in the bus where Frank was sitting. I told him about David's offer. I reminded him of his plans to edit his film and pay me a retainer and asked him if it didn't make more sense for me to join David's tour for four months instead. I told him I would gladly return after the tour. Frank reached out and we shook hands. That evening, February 26, 1978, we played a concert in Brussels, Belgium. One of Frank's songs we did was Yo Mama. But at that show, Frank substituted the words, You're David. So this, this is what we sang. Maybe you should stay with your David. He can do your laundry and cook for you. Maybe you should stay with your David. You're really kind of stupid and ugly too. Two nights later, the tour ended in London at the Hammersmith Odeon. There was an onstage occurrence which angered Frank. Fortunately, I had nothing to do with it. Frank cut the show short and stormed off. The next day, most of the band members flew back to LA where they, where they all lived. I was told later that Frank fired the band on that flight home fired everyone. 
I got on a plane to Dallas for two weeks rehearsal with David Bowie. And that's where the story ends with Adrian Ballou. If you're a Frank Zappa fan, we've had some great stuff here on the channel about Frank Zappa. And I'll put a link to some of that down below in the comments. And uh, if you're a David Bowie fan, I have a friend who lives here in Indianapolis that I interviewed who was on David Bowie's road crew way back in the day. I'll put it right here. Be sure and watch that. It's really good. And I will see you guys somewhere down the road. Much love to you.